Okay, go ahead. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, to this special meeting of the Bath Commission, Bath Planning Commission. Uh, today's date is February 18th, 2021. And so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Um, just wanna provide a quick overview of kind of where we're at and what we're doing today. So this is intended to be sort of a kickoff meeting uh, as Bath embarks on this probably uh, complicated, uh, potentially process to try to understand how to improve internet access in the township. Uh, and so the, the Board of Trustees of Bath Township has um, given the Planning Commission some discretion to investigate this issue. And as part of that process, uh, we are planning to appoint a, a task force, uh, which if you are looking on from Facebook or live here, you can find that uh, sign up for the task force on the Bath Township website. Uh, and then along with that, this meeting, which is really meant to um, ha ha provide an overview discussion of the issue uh, with some invited guests here who we've talked to in the last few weeks. Uh, so Nick in particular, um, our planning director for Bath Township has been talking with people uh, in these last few days, getting some perspective on the possible options that Bath might have to try to improve internet access in the township. So some of those people have graciously uh, accepted uh, our invitation to join us today. And so we're probably gonna start the meeting um, with sort of brief overviews from those invited speakers. We have three. Um, and then after that, we're gonna move to a committee of the whole so that uh, commissioners, but as well as the public can participate in a question and answer period with those guests if they, uh, if they choose to stay along here and, and answer some questions. Uh, and then there'll be some opportunity for a regular sort of public comment period. And, and that, should, that should be it for the meeting. Um, so we do have an agenda. So we're gonna go through some of the formalities of the meeting just really quickly. Uh, commissioners, we have an agenda here. It's been uh, distributed. Are there any changes to that agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve the agenda as is? I'll move to approve the agenda. Support. And we have support by Ray. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And the agenda is approved. Uh, there's opportunity now for commissioners to uh, announce any conflicts of interest with the agenda item today. Is there any conflict of interest? Hearing none, seeing none, uh, appears not. So let's move on. So we've got, as I said, three invited speakers today. Uh, we have a pair of speakers or representatives from SpartanNet, uh, Richard Lang and uh, Bill Knapp. I believe Bill, I'm not sure if I see, oh, there he is. Uh, so Bill's here too. SpartanNet, uh, if you don't know, has been a fixture in the community, the broader community, uh, providing internet access solutions. And so Nick and I and Jason, uh, we've had a conversation with them previously, but they've, uh, they're gonna sort of give a two-part, my understanding, a two-part sort of uh, discussion. First, just kind of covering the, the basic options that Bath might have in addressing this access issue. And then maybe what uh, SpartanNet in particular, uh, their experience and what they might bring to the table as far as the solutions that Bath might consider. So we're gonna start with SpartanNet and then we're gonna move to uh, Gary Muntz who is uh, from Linden Township in Washtenaw County. And Gary provides some real important perspective. Uh, he has been down the road that Bath is currently embarking on. So a lot of experience mm -hmm. thinking about this issue, raising funds, trying to solve this problem. and so. We really appreciate uh, Gary for being here too and providing his perspective. So we'll start with SpartanNet though. So Richard or Bill, uh, whoever would like to go first, just jump right in. I, I don't mind uh, kicking us off and uh, Bill can uh, kind of support and, and uh, assist as we go. Uh, we've told this story a few times, so we're getting fairly decent at it. So uh, SpartanNet, uh, here, born and bred in East Lansing, Michigan, uh, your, your neighbor, and uh, we have been delivering uh, ultra-high-speed broadband services for uh, about 20 years now. Um, the, the, the first in Michigan to deliver gigabit Ethernet uh, to the residential market, um, and uh, the first in the nation to bring 10 gig to a student housing project. So that's, uh, that's all happening right here in, in our backyard. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're first and foremost an internet service provider. Um, we, uh, we like to say we go one step further and we, we take our service and the service that, that we deliver 
uh, to that. And um, we, uh, we, we do it in a lot of different ways, right? So the, the interesting thing about our, our business and our company is that uh, we do fiber to the home, we do wireless, we do uh, a lot of ethernet, uh, we're just experts in, in broadband delivery, uh, uh, whatever flavor that looks like. And um, we, they're, they're not all the same. Uh, we have primarily focused our business around dense market housing. So uh, we, uh, over the last 20 years, uh, build our own fiber network, um, you know, here in, in the greater Lansing area, uh, Grand Rapids, uh, Ferndale, Michigan. And uh, we've uh, managed that network and, and connected it to the, uh, the internet service uh, through all major entrances to the internet, so to speak, uh, here in Michigan, uh, Chicago, uh, and uh, so on. So, um, you know, we're, we're very uh, sincere to residential broadband and uh, the challenge that everybody faces with, um, you know, rural delivery of such a thing. And, uh, you know, we are interested in this because, uh, you know, expanding ourselves out um, and doing our own research on what, how to help that problem, right? So uh, discovering for ourselves options, uh, understanding technology to a point where uh, try to make something, you know, deliverable, affordable, um, and, uh, I think that, uh, that's kind of how we kind of come together today is, you know, to assist in discussing some of those options. And there's definitely some options out there. Um, and, you know, we're, we're assisting the, the discovery as well. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of expertise in that and, uh, very familiar with the Linden Township, uh, uh, deployment, um. You know, I've, I've spoken to uh, that group, uh, not necessarily Gary, but uh, familiar with that deployment. We, uh, we actually were uh, um, a participant in uh, the middleware selection um, at, at the time that they were searching. And um, you know, we, we deliver a lot of service in the same way. So you know, as a general introduction, um, that's, that's SpartanNet built. How, how did I do? A plus. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, uh, yeah, we, we're, we are very approachable and I've uh, got no challenges with taking it down to a layman's term uh, and trying to bring it back up. Um, so we, we understand it is very complicated and can be. So um, we uh, will do our best. Yeah, I guess the only I think the only thing that I would add is you just kind of touched on it right there, Richard. We're really good at listening. And um, yeah. we've been listening to the, about the digital divide for a long time now and, and want to be involved in that. So I'll, t I'll say one other thing about this company. Um, and I actually worked with them when they first got started 20 years ago when I first met Richard uh, as another provider. And um, it was always one the, one the idea of one step further and not being afraid to try to fix something. Uh, and so um, it's what you want to do in Bath is not something that is foreign to us in any way. Uh, although, you know, we don't necessarily, we can't point to a, a municipality uh, that we've done this, but we coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, because of the need today is so prevalent and we're so aware of it right now because of what we've gone through over the last 12 months now, how important internet is. Uh, we're involved with a couple of municipalities and there's a really a great need for it. So we're, we're just thrilled to be here. And uh, with regard to the listening part, we survey our, our residents all the time, residents being residents of these student housing and multifamily apartments. And um, we had in one question out of probably 30 questions we asked, what do you find are the most important criteria for selecting an apartment? And internet and Wi-Fi was second only to internet or a second only to rent. So in other words, I'm going to see what the price is per month, but What's next is internet and Wi-Fi. We actually had a, 
uh, property manager, one of the, his residents tell him, you know, I don't really don't care about plumbing. I can go to the IM building to shower if I need to or buy a bottle of water, just make sure I got good internet. So we're here to serve you and figure out how we can serve you. We're, we're open to finding a way to do that. And so we're yeah pleased to be here with you. And uh, so that's probably as much as I'm going to offer because uh, Richard is definitely the engineer on the call here. Okay, thanks, Richard. Uh, Bill, so I wonder if uh, maybe Richard, then, uh, if you might just uh, step back and kind of briefly talk about the possible options that Bath has. What, what are the various technologies and approaches that Bath might consider? And it could be a collection, right, of solutions. Sure. That, that Bath might consider. And, you know, of course, the task force that, that's going to be initiated soon is really going to take these options and study them a, a lot more carefully. But for everyone listening, it might be a good idea just to, to get the lay of the land for the, the kinds of solutions that we might consider. Sure, absolutely. Well, <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me take my, my service provider hat on and put my, my township hat on and, and look at it through that particular lens, right? So, you know, currently Bath Township has a service provider, uh, probably a couple of them being uh, the Verizon uh, delivering services over DSL network, your, your plain old telephone wire network. Um, you've got uh, a, a wow cable presence in there. Um, and then essentially probably an LTE provider, your phone provider, your Verizon AT&Ts. And that would be what broadband looks like right now. And you know the your or sorry your frontier network your DSL. Um, I live in. I'm currently a resident in Langsburg. I've lived there for uh, the last 15 years plus. Uh, so I uh, I understand the burden uh, that is uh, you're trying to solve. And the uh, the frontier network three three megs is um, you know it might as well be two cans in a string and. You know, you're not going to do business. You're not going to do school uh, over that type of connection. Um, the uh, the LTE network, your phone network, uh, being the the next kind of level there. Um, although that presence, the 5G network, I mean, it's getting better, but uh, coverages can be spotty in rural areas. Um, you know, and that's like a, a 18 to 20 meg, but there's data caps. Uh, and, you know, these, these uh, data caps then either restrict or essentially stop your connectivity there or charge you overage. Um, and then there's the wow. Uh, and, you know, that could be wow, the service is great or wow, it's not great. Um, you know, I guess it would depend. Um, but their, their presence is not going to be in, in everywhere that it really needs to be. It's going to be more in your dense uh, area of town, and they're not going to go and build facilities out to, you know, some of the parcels that you would have in, in Bath, uh, so that uh, that's less desirable for them. And, uh, you know, from uh, options that would be potentially available for Bath Township is, um, you know, obviously you could go to WOW and say, WOW, I need more coverage for your service. And that those models are going to end up being something where they're going to build, the community pays, uh, it's going to be some form of leasing agreement, um, those uh, which you know, may be desirable, may not be desirable, or it's going to go to the resident um, to, uh, to fund the build. And you know, in my specific situation, I've had contact with WOW, and you know, it's in the terms of Ten to twelve thousand dollars to to bring connectivity for fifteen to two thousand feet, and you know it just makes it less desirable. Um, so there there kind of lies the problem. So if you are now vested into solving it, um, you you you've got a couple paths, right? So you're going to uh, partner up with a WOW, partner up with a uh, a <clears throat> private service provider. Uh, to assist in, in uh, delivery, or you guys are going to take on as a municipality uh, a potential municipality-owned, operated, built network. 
um, which, you know, from our research kind of has a couple different paths uh, in order to assist in funding such a thing. Um, but it also creates a, a small challenge with, you know, now I own a network and how I'm going to manage it and who's my partner with managing this network and, um, you know, who's going to build it, uh, how, how long they've been around, and, you know, are, are people going to go away? So um, there's, there's lots of paths. I'm sure that uh, the discussion can, can go down uh, on that, that we, uh, we have some familiarity with. Uh, obviously, uh, Linden Township does as well. But uh, I mean, that's, that's probably the, the, the status as uh, the situation right, right now. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Um, yeah. So that, that's a good segue to uh, Linden Township and, and Gary Muntz, I think. So I don't know how long ago you started uh, on this, uh, this question that we are now asking Gary in Bath, but it'd be great just to hear your experience, uh, sort of where you started, how you got to, to where you are now and, and the various bumps and, and hurdles along the way. So thanks for being here too, Gary. Uh, we got to unmute Gary. <laughs> I know maybe, you you, maybe you'd rather mute me for this conversation. I'm not sure. <laughs> but good afternoon, everyone. And thank you. Thank you for, uh, for taking the time to allow me to speak to you this afternoon. Uh, hello to our friends at SpartanNet. Uh, ben Feynman, I'm sure he sends his uh, regards and he wishes you well. And uh, we, we are big fans of everything that you've done. I'm going to start with a few sort of overarching comments about this. And then I uh, will relate to you the Linden Township story. Um, let me just say that Linden Township started this adventure around about 2015. I'll, I'll go into some of the nitty gritty of that. It didn't take us that long to build our network, but that's when we started the process. But I just want to say that, you know, I'm, the position that you're in uh, is confusing, uh, difficult, and challenging. Um, there's just never did any one of us think that it would become our responsibility to build a utility to any of our residents. And I consider telecommunications or broadband to be a utility. I think that was one of the big hurdles for Linden Township. When we started on this, uh, as uh, Richard said, we started looking for partners or for a way, a way to do this, that someone would help us out, uh, be it a Comcast or a, a WOW or whoever. And uh, it, became apparent to us that that was not going to happen for us, that they were not interested in doing that. And that was st strictly a financial decision on their part. So for us, it led to the, the sort of watershed moment of saying, oh my goodness, we will have to build this ourselves. So I understand this position that you're in right now, trying to find your way, trying to find a pathway forward. And I think you're on the right track, exactly where you are. You need to gather information from all kinds of different sources and resources before you can actually even begin to make your planning process, you, you need to have uh, ideas about which directions to travel first. And Lyndon, uh, in, the, in the early days, we were going in all kinds of different directions and really didn't know which direction or path to travel. So I think it's good that you're doing this sort of landscape survey now. So gathering information is good. The second thing I'll say to you is this, I want, uh, given the, the status of, and Richard touched on it, that broadband or internet access is so important to everyone right now, the, the statement that comes along with that is everyone knows it's important and everyone wants it today. They want it right now. And unfortunately, that's not something that's going to happen. So time and timing, you're gonna to have to sort of get yourself into the, how long is it going to actually take to do this once we actually find our way and find a, a plan and set, and set ourselves out on that plan? So that's a very important thing to know. The other thing, as Richard also touched upon, <clears throat> is you've got, you've got information gathering, you've got this time factor, and then sort of the, at the end of all of that is how, how is this funded? Where does the funding come from? That's the other big question that you'll have to solve. Uh, Linden Township, it's a little different or was a little different than your situation. You have what I would call the served and the unserved, meaning you have different levels of access that are in your township. Uh, that's both good at some levels and it's also a challenge at others. Uh, Linden, for example, we had no internet access of any sort. 
uh, none at all. We had no fiber in any parts of our township or nothing at all to, to, that we could go and try to try to leverage to move forward. Uh, you have some in some places and not in others, so you're going to have to you're going to have to deal with that. But with Linden, I'll give you a quick, real quick snapshot of, of what we did. Uh, I think the first thing that was important for us was um, surveying and understanding what it was that people were currently doing for internet access. Did they have any kind of cellular access? Did they have any kind of low speed DSL access? And when I say they didn't have broadband, the broadband definition, as you know, is 25 megabits uh, uh, download and three megabits up. That's a 2015 FCC standard. And that standard is by no means what I would call applicable today. I would say any solution you would have today would have to be 100, 100 megabits sy symmetrical in order to be, I think, to keep pace with where we currently are, not to mention future growth. So Linden had no 25 uh, up or 25 down and three up. We had none of that. So we had a clean slate to start with. One, so what we did was we surveyed our residents. Uh, what were they using? Uh, what were their speeds? Uh, we looked for customer uh, sent or resident sentiment about satisfaction. Uh, was it adequate? Was it not adequate? Uh, if they had greater bandwidth, what would they do with it? Uh, so we went through a surveying uh, uh, effort, effort, and that really was very valuable because that sort of gave us a much more granular, accurate description of the problem that we were facing. We had a lot of anecdotal evidence. I can't, I don't have it. I don't, I, I can't get it. It costs a lot. It has data caps. We had all that, but we didn't have it in any organized uh, data gathering form. So the first thing was to gather information. Uh, once we did that, uh, we began to, that's really, that was the inception of the involvement and the discussions with residents. Our, our approach throughout the entire project was that we weren't, we weren't telling people how to do this or that they needed to do it. We were basically providing people information and having conversations about what, our, what the problem was and how we all felt would be the best way to proceed. So we weren't trying to force any particular solution at the time. Can, so what the next step along the way was to, um, to have a conversation with our township board. Um, we needed to have some financial backing at that point in order to move forward. And so we needed to get the support of the township to, to give us some funding to do a pre-engineering or feasibility study. So that was an important point. Uh, the surveying work that we'd done with, with our residents was the key in giving that information to the board. So the board became very aware that the, the residents of the township, this was something that they, they had a, a great interest in and wanted to move forward with. So once we, we took the message to the board, they approved a feasibility or pre-engineering study. And that pre-engineering study, based on the information we gathered from our residents, that gave us sort of a, a number a dollar and cent number of what it was going to cost to build out Linden Township. Linden Township chose to go with fiber optic cable to the home. So we have 70 miles of road in Linden Township, pri private roads, public roads. So we uh, adopted a plan that built fiber optic cable down the 70 miles of roads, public roads in Linden Township. And then people could subscribe to that service. They had a choice in whether they would or would not to subscribe to that. Part of our, our surveying data was important because uh, we needed to know what we felt the, the subscription rate would be to make sure we had a viable business model to support the funding. Uh, our, our initial surveys of the residents indicated that we'd have some place in the neighborhood of as high as 66% of the people would be willing to subscribe to a service that was based on the cost that we then had we had figured a general cost of the service. And they, so 66% of the residents said that they would subscribe to that service. So that was really important in going forward. So to jump fast forward, we took, we took this to the voters in terms of a ballot initiative. And the, the request of the voters was, um, would you support a 20 year 2.91 mil uh, taxation to build the, this infrastructure in the township? That translates into $7 million for Linden Township, 2.9 mills, 2.91 mills. Based on the average property value at that time in Linden Township, that came out on average between the high and the low 
somewhere in the neighborhood of $25 to $30 per month for each resident. We took it to the we took the uh, vote and the township, amazingly enough, voted 66% in favor of the millage and 33% or 37% of the people or 34 didn't want the millage. So we had a, a rather resounding approval of the millage. From that forward, that part forward was the engagement of a consultant to help us figure out how we move forward. We needed to hire, uh, first that we need to hire an outside plant constructor, someone who was actually gonna install the fiber. Uh, once that was underway and moving forward, then we went into the, uh, who was going to operate or provide service across the network. We also issued, we issued an RFI for that, a request for information. And that is the people like SmartNet and others that do this kind of service. We wanted somebody who mm -hmm. would provide a high, ca high caliber quality service to our residents, who was able to manage the back end, do all of the billing for us and things of that nature. So we were looking for an operator that could do that for us. We found an operator and today, uh, well, let me just say we it took us three years from the time we received the bond money to the time we finished the project, which is in December of this year. We have 920 subscribers, which is about 87% of our population out of 1,200 and some odd households. Um, and we are in, a, in the middle of a five-year contract with our current ISP service provider. So that, in a nutshell, is sort of the Linden story. That was great, Carrie. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. So I guess at this point, um, I would like to move to a committee of the whole. And that just means that anybody that's on the Zoom call now uh, can pose a, a question or provide a comment. Uh, and, and if the, the, the meeting is live streaming on Facebook, just know that if you're watching via the, the live Facebook stream, we're not monitoring those comments. Uh, and so uh, if you would like to raise a question or make a comment, you're gonna have to log into the Zoom call and do so there. And, and we welcome you in, in doing that. So um, yeah, let's just uh, take a little time now and, and uh, entertain some questions or comments from anybody. And yeah, Ryan, go ahead. Thanks, Dan. I'm just wondering if Nick or Karen or someone at the township knows, do we have any infrastructure in place? Do we have any fiber laid across the township? Is it usable? Are there any assets that we could grow from? So, you know what, uh, Ryan, I can pull up, uh, I think I can share my screen. I have, Nick, I have that connected nation map up if that might be helpful. Yeah, so, if you can pull that up, that'd be great. So there is some okay. fiber. Um, I'm not 100% sure who owns all of it, but there is a bit that was laid right in the core of that. Uh, all right, that can you see that, everybody, the map? Connects the schools, I can yes. see it. So it does look like so, it's being shared. Yeah, so the, you can see this orange area here. Um, this is the, according to Connected Nation, this is the fiber that's currently in the township. Um, and you can, and then I can overlay these kind of various different ways that you might access the internet. So I'm gonna click off the fixed wireless. You can get a clear sense for where fiber currently is. Now we don't know anything really about that. Uh, these look like trunk lines. And so, you know, much of the cost of expanding the fiber network is going from the trunk line to the home. And so, you know, there's, there's an additional cost, even if we've got this spread of trunk lines, there's a, a, a significant cost to get this to the home probably. And then just to kind of cover the various options that the township has, you know, if I overlay the fixed wireless, so you can see that that takes, it covers some of the Northern part of the township. Uh, the darker green means you, you're, you tend to have faster speeds, the lighter gain less so. So you can see in those rural areas, those fixed wireless providers really concentrate on the rural parts of the township. And then if I overlay the cable access in the township, you can see that that picks up mostly the Southern part of the township. Looks like, there we go. There we go. I was gonna say if it wants to show up. This red, reddish area. So as, as Gary mentioned, we're, we're probably in a different state than Linden Township in that they had very little coverage of any kind. So we've got this hodgepodge of coverage, fixed wireless, some fiber, some cable. Uh, and so, you know, we don't know, but that might point us to kind of a hodgepodge solution as well. Ryan, is that, is that helpful to? 
Yeah, that's that's helpful. I I would not assume though that the folks covered in this map would not bail on what they're covered with right now to come to something else from the point. vast amount of feedback I get from my neighbors and friends and we hear at the board meetings every week. So uh, I yeah. think, you know, there's some opportunity there too. Right, and which this points to the importance, I think what Gary mentioned of a survey, right? So we, we've got some anecdotal evidence that even these coverage maps are unreliable, that you know, if it says that you get 100 megs, uh, there's many folks that are supposed to get that that are not getting that in these areas. And so a survey would give us maybe a better sense for you know, the coverage, the actual coverage in the township and how people are using these various um, providers. Okay, other questions or comments? Yeah, Carl. No, you're, we can't hear you yet, Carl. I know you're unmuted, but we can't hear your voice. Still nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's try now. There we go. There, there we go. go. All right. I've got four audio devices hooked up to my computer, and yeah. Anyhow, I, uh, so I moved to the area in 2014, and I've been I moved to the house I am based on Wow's availability back then, 25 meg, um, and I've been very interested in this ever since. Uh, I'm director of IT for a bunch of doctor's offices in Lansing, East Lansing, and I have a, a pretty good working relationship with a number of ISPs, most specifically ACD. And I can tell you that that map that was just shown, the, the cable map uh, is very off. The fiber map is a little bit off. I mean, we've got some Zayo long haul and ACD uh, long hauls. And I've got a pretty good map of ACD based on um, what they publish publicly. Um, so I, I would say, and from my perspective, having WoW for six years, I would quickly move to pretty much anything immediately uh, based on their, their quality of service and price. Um, and, and I'd say if you do a survey, that would be a pretty resounding response of anyone that actually relies on the internet connection. And the, the people that have helped out that had Frontier in the area, I've seen some people get sub one meg during, you know, early afternoon when they should be getting the best speed they can get. So I, I don't think it'd be that hard to convince people to, to make this move. Um, my question is kind of for, for Gary, um, what ISP did you end up getting into your area? Uh, thank you very much. We went with uh, Midwest Energy and Communications out of Cassopolis. They are, uh, they have, traditionally been an electrical co-op provider, which you'll find many of these electric co-op providers these days are getting into the internet business. But uh, they they came in and they are doing all uh, of our ISP operations. They did also assist during the construction period. They did some of the cable installation for us and they did all of the drops. And I think someone mentioned the actual cable from the fiber to the, from the road to the home. I would just say that Linden Township has as much cable in the drops that runs from the road to the homes as we do have in actual miles of roadway. So the drops are an enormous amount of cable, but we used MEC to do that. Thank you, Carl, for the comment and question. Other questions and comments from anybody? I want to reiterate too that we are trying to put together a task force. And so we're not restricting that to people mm -hmm. with IT expertise, also project management expertise, familiarity with government regulations for development, you know, all of these kinds of skill sets I think would be valuable on that on that committee. So I've got to show a hand from uh, Kenneth. Yeah. Hi. Um I've been a Bath resident for I think 17 or 18 years. 
and uh, using WoW the entire time. Uh, I think I'm one of the luckier ones where I only partially hate WoW, but I know that we'd be a lot better off with fiber. And I've been watching some of the people in the area and like Lightspeed that was taken over by I think Metronet. I know they're coming up Chandler Road, fairly close to the township. And I'm not sure if that'd be something we'd be able to um, plug into. Whether or not we'd use them as an ISP, I have no idea. That's not for me to decide, but that'd be something that, yeah, say I've been watching. If you watch their maps, they're hitting some of the apartment complexes. And I think, what's the other, the other subdivision that's part of the golf course, the Eagle Eye part. I think they're supposed to be providing there. So they're not very far from us. I know that doesn't only gets the bottom corner of the township, but it might be something that we could leverage. Great, thank you. Yeah, and if anybody else, including our guests, have responses or thoughts on any of the comments, feel free to jump back in too. I would like to make a comment about mapping. Yeah, Gary. Uh, Carl is absolutely correct. And I think we all are aware of this. The FCC Form 477 maps, although they were updated somewhat in December, our, our experience with that is that they were exceeding, I mean, let me be careful about my adjectives or qualifiers here. They were greatly different than what we found in the results of our survey. They were significantly different. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that echoes a lot of the what we've heard from else, other people too. Yeah, Richard. I just wanted to make another comment in regards to some of the fiber that is there. Um, I mean, because we do leverage some of that fiber and it's typically meant for more long haul, uh, not necessarily meant for drop. And, you know, as you start to think about what build out looks like within a township, you know, eventually you are going to be considering drops uh, and the network that you would do would most likely want to be uh, either your own, uh, own dark fiber if you're going fiber to the home. Um, and, you know, the, the network that's in place now would essentially assist you to potentially stitch something together over your own network to, for delivery. Um, so uh, we, we use it uh, in from the most, most carriers in the area are buying or leasing off of that, that cable that's there. Um, so, but in regards to residential delivery, it may be less useful uh, only for stitching some things together. Um, and and I, I had one other adder on that because I, uh, just as you think about what models you're looking at, I, I thought it may be useful to tell a little story of another municipality that we're working with um, who was going down this path of trying to find somebody to come in uh, and the economics of doing that and what those deals were kind of looking like. And we're choosing a different path, which was to build and brand their own network and uh, do something similar to what uh, Linden Township was doing, but they were doing it more off of uh, the commercial TIF funding to assist with building um, and then attempting to make an economic uh, machine to then further their build out uh, to the residential market. But, you know, the one thing that we have been talking about with them is more, once you put a drill in the ground, you don't really want it to stop. And that uh, you want to build and uh, carry on with that until you have reached, you know, whatever your critical mass was of service delivery. Um, so regardless of, of kind of what uh, <coughs> Bath Township lands on, a few things to consider uh, and, and whether you were looking for your own municipal network or a partner of some sort, um, it's just there's not, not, it, it, there's not just one way to do it. Thank you. Uh, Chris, I see a hand up there. Yeah, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. We can. Thanks. So I live about a quarter of a mile off of Webster on Clice Road, and I have Hughes, <laughs> HughesNet, and a couple of jet packs, but I, I teach at Cooley. I cannot teach from home. I have to come to the school to teach. Um, but the, the thing that I really wanted to say is um, to thank the Planning Commission for holding this meeting and really looking at this. 
um, I want to just draw your attention to a really interesting study that MSU did because, uh, and this was pre-COVID, um, um, and that students who do not have internet do worse across the boards than students who do. And so the fact that we're looking at this for the township is going to be a benefit for educational opportunity for all of our kids. And I think that's a really, really important thing. And I can't emphasize educational opportunity enough. So thanks for doing this. Thank you for the comment, Chris. Yeah, I mean, the uh, COVID pandemic has really brought this issue to a head uh, in multiple ways, education and working from home and, and, and all of those things. So yeah, thanks for that comment. Uh, yeah. Kathy. Sorry, yeah, Kathy, and I think I'll, then I think, that, is that Gary? You want to jump yeah. back into? Yeah. Okay, so Kathy first, and then we'll go back to Gary. I, and I don't have much new to say. I just wanted to, you can hear me, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to reiterate, I think the survey is going to be critical. Um, even WOW didn't know what comes into my neighborhood, so they were actually charging people for a higher speed than even came into the neighborhood. And, uh, and then what I do pay for that does come into the neighborhood, I have typically 25 to 30% um, of what they guarantee and they guarantee 70%. So, um, so I think the survey is gonna be critical and I too try to work from home. I've got two different, I've got a Verizon Jetpack and a T-Mobile Jetpack and wow, and I bounce back and forth to try to find one that works at that moment. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you and, and a lot of the other people in Bath, right? Similar yes. kinds of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary. I would just suggest that if people have not, that they visit Washtenaw County Broadband Task Force. That website, Washtenaw County Broadband Task Force. There, you can see firsthand the complete survey and the results of the survey that was done for Washtenaw County. And you can see the accompanying engineering, pre-engineering plan that was also laid out. So if you want to know what this stuff looks like in the real, what, is, what does a survey look like? What do the results look like? What does a pre-engineering survey look like? You'll find it there. And I will also uh, you know, echo Chris's comments. Much of the information about education and its effect and its impact, you'll find lots of resources on that website about what those are. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Great. Other comments or questions? Richard. You know, as early as this week, we had a meeting in regards to a, a, a long haul service provider that was working on building network for uh, the school districts. And I don't know how that falls in line with uh, Bath, but as we looked at maps, they were on the map, which meant that, that somebody is going to be doing some building um, so maybe it's something to look into. Um, and, uh, that service provider was one, two, three dot net. They're, they're not a residential, uh, provider. They're more of a long haul provider, but typically there's overbuilds. And if they are putting some stuff in the ground, there's opportunity, uh, to lay a conduit along with them that, uh, if, if they're already got something going that may change the economics, make it more affordable. Thank you. So I wonder if our guests might just comment on it. And this, this came up early when Nick and I and, and Jason were talking to various people, you know, the solution of fixed wireless, which more and more sounds like it's not a solution uh, just because it's uh, temperamental. Uh, there's lots of transmission problems with fixed wireless, but initially it was a way maybe to ride a cheaper way to provide greater access to the township. It sounds like, at least from this meeting alone, a lot of people have access, they're just not satisfied with their access. And so fixed wireless probably wouldn't give you the kind of access that most people are, are, are considering. And I know, Gary, when we, when we raised this idea to you, uh, you, you sort of said, run away. I think uh -huh. you did. From, from, yeah. from, fixed, from fixed wireless as a solution. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna coach you on that. Don't put, word, put words in my mouth, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, objectively, I mean, you need to evaluate these solutions. I mean, there's lots of written information about this. This is my firsthand opinion. It's my opinion. It's not, you know, whatever. 
Uh, Linden looked into that, but Linden uh, fixed wireless for us. I think someone mentioned it earlier requires the erection of towers and whatnot to be able to broadcast a signal. It's sort of a line of sight affair. Linden Township is a very rolling wooded kind of a terrain. So fixed wireless was very, very difficult to achieve any kind of, you know, wide coverage based, uh, you know, on having, we'd have to have towers, a lot more towers than we'd care to build. The second thing I mentioned, I mentioned earlier is that, you know, there is a currently, there, and there is, there will be always, a limit on the amount of throughput that you can generate through a fixed wireless installation. And at the rate of growth of use of bandwidth and things on the internet, I think that we're already at or eclipsing what fixed wireless can provide. So those are the, a couple of things I would say. And the other part about that is that those fixed wireless radios and antennas and all of that stuff, they have a life expectancy or a replacement of somewhere is probably in the five to seven years where that equipment needs to be replaced. So there are some, there's some difficulties with fixed wireless. The positive thing is you could put it up fast, you could, but the question is at what cost, how many towers, what's the throughput that you're able to gather from uh, fixed wireless. And I know that <laughs> Richard and Bill probably have some thoughts on that topic. Yeah, Richard. Muted. You're there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, we would we would also share that it's a line of sight issue. Trees definitely get in the way. You know, one one approach that we have been uh, entertaining or at least doing some R and D uh, is the new um, CBRS frequency that has come out that is uh, now available as a, what they call a lightly licensed uh, frequency, where it, it, in essence, <clears throat> it's, it's for general use, but managed. So you, you have to participate in uh, uh, working with a managed service provider that will monitor the spectrum, so to speak, but it gives you a uh, hundred megs uh, uh, potentially even higher at a six mile radius. And it has the ability to burn through the trees and uh, coverage that may be a little bit better than like a fixed wireless connection. Doesn't have the same type of connectivity, but um, has the ability to assist in what I would call that, that really hard to, to reach spot. Uh, but it is still fairly new. Um, it, it's not quite, bleeding edge, uh, but it's uh, it's out there and people are still trying to understand how it's going to, to work. But, you know, people like Google, uh, Google Fiber, they've transitioned to looking at this for some last mile, very rural uh, service deliveries. And um, it's it's should not be taken off the table as an option to assist in um, finance or uh, making something affordable. Uh, for rural broadband. Bill. Yes. yes, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in. Uh, there's a uh, weekly uh, panel webinar that goes on called Broadband Breakfast. And I saw the fifth out of a series of five panels yesterday where uh, experts across the country uh, both the academic and also from municipalities and industry and associations, lobbying firms. Um, so there's a really quite a diverse collection of uh, individuals with their own perspective. And this whole conversation yesterday came up about wireless and the uh, fact that wireless needs fiber. You know, can't do, can't do wireless without fiber. And that it is a rather, well, I think temperamental was a term that was used here and they used as well. It's temporary, transitionary, and that the investment that you make today, you know, is gonna be uh, paid back more over the future in fiber than it will any other technology. It's, you know, the, it's the entry into it. It's that initial capital expense that uh, makes the decision and makes the investment challenging but in the long run, you know, if we can look out beyond um, five, 10 years, that's a decision that they made well 
so, and I'm happy to, they, they record all of those, but for those who have an interest in time and want to spend more time looking at a computer screen, um, I'll, I'll send out the, the link and they do have a library of these recorded sessions and I'll send a link to the one that was yesterday if it's out and available today. It's worth a watch. And I will also add that that group is a very big proponent of surveying, data surveying of your audience. They're a very big supporter of that concept. Great, thank you. Ryan. Thanks, Dan. Uh, two thoughts. It's clear that with the education information that was shared here and just, I work in education too, and frankly, I have three kids doing virtual schooling, uh, that the schools must be a good partner for this, at least a conversation with them if we haven't. Is there any way to work together? Is there any way to build together? Because they would certainly be a beneficiary of that. So I think we should reach out to them. And then my second comment is just to apologize. I have a hard stop at two. I know that leaves us without a quorum. So I'm sorry, I can't, I can't avoid it. <laughs> no problem. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, and so maybe, so, you know, uh, I don't know how much more there is if, if people have additional comments and I think we can stay and take those, but I wonder if anybody, including our guests, have some comments uh, or insights on the funding landscape out there. Uh, we know that broadband access is, is a, you know, interest that various government levels have, state and federal. Mm -hmm. And if anyone has any particular insights on what that currently looks like, that might be appreciated too. Knowing that our task force will probably dig into that issue as well. Right. I'll take a quick crack at that. Uh, I'm going to be pretty frank with you. Uh, it's been my experience through my Linden experience and also with Washtenaw County and various other things that I would not count on any kind of federal grant money to build my network, to build a network. Uh, there is money, but the competition is significant for that money. There's a lot of places that are completely unserved and that money is oftentimes ends up in those places. So I would, I would be leery of, of, of counting on federal funding to build my network. And the other thing you'll find about federal funding, even if you did get it, it's usually not just money handed to you. There's just usually a matching grant of some, some way, shape or form. It goes anywhere from a 50-50 match up to, you know, uh, you paying 75% and they'll pay 25. So I, I just, I'd say, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't investigate grant money, but I'm saying I would not count on it as my source. One thing I think that would be valuable to you is I've seen recently come out some funding sources that will fund the planning or surveying for you. And I think that's a much more realistic area in which to gather money from the government would be to do the actual planning rather than the building. Thanks, Gary. And if you if you could, if you can remember those, if you could uh, yeah, send, send us along. those contacts, that yeah. would be really appreciated. Thank you. So are there other comments or questions? Give everybody a few seconds here. Yeah, Carl. I'm looking at the USDA uh, rural map and Bath does not qualify for that grant okay. uh, just based on most of the downtown area, the vast majority of our population okay. being in a covered um, urban area. Okay. So uh, Gary's definitely right there. Um, yeah, so. Okay, thank you. Thanks for checking that Carl. Uh, Will. Yeah, I uh, looked into that as well. And there are areas that are unserved. It goes by uh, census tracts. So I have documentation on that. And the, uh, the tricky part about getting that grant that are available is the uh, internet companies have to apply for them themselves. And they don't want to do it because it's a lot of work. Uh, so wow, we'd have to get, and but they have to do it with the assistance of the governmental entity. And uh, other areas around here have gotten those grants. It's just a question of uh, getting the right people working on it 
and convincing WOW and Frontier to apply. And if the township did all the legwork, all the book work, finding the underserved areas, it's pretty complicated and planning it out. Uh, so that's kind of what uh, the problem is. And so you got to pay money up front. You got to do some of that analysis and uh, work. You got to meet with the companies and tell them what you want to do, that you want them to apply and that you'll help them out. And the DDA has funds to put towards that. But the DDA area already has pretty good internet. Although the downtown uh, could use, uh, uh, we talked about this uh, in years past, getting the high speed internet that's over at the uh, schools over to the downtown because it's only a few blocks away. And that would be doable if you want high speed in the downtown. But the, most people are pretty comfortable with what they have now. Although I'm on Main Street, I would like better higher speed uh, access that the broadband uh, that they have at the school has. So that's, that's just my thoughts on it. I will send you the information I have. We want that sent to the planning commission or who? Yeah, that would be great if you could do that. You okay. could send it to Nick or myself, Will. Okay, thanks. And Thank Will's you. point's a very good one. If you were to apply for a government grant, you'd be much more likely to receive it if you have a project that's shovel ready, meaning that you have done all the research and lined up all the things, you have a cost, you know where you're going. Right. There are grants, there's one coming out uh, soon from the National Telecommunications uh, NTIA. They have a 60 to 90 day application window. So unless you have your plan ready, you're not, probably not gonna get a plan in 60 to 90 days. So if you have a shovel ready plan, that does increase your odds of being successful. Great, thank you. Richard. Yeah, I was just gonna uh, piggyback on a couple of those comments that you know, in order to even qualify uh, for those funds, you also have to uh, be registered with the FCC and be able to collect the, uh, the tax on that. So that is one stipulation of it. And that uh, you know, part of the application that I have seen where they are successful they, uh, they come with all the survey data as well. Right. So it requires some of that surveying and that if uh, the, the ones that we have kind of been communication with, that again, if, if there is service in a particular area, they don't qualify. Um, so those, uh, the, the makes it a little more difficult on that front. Um, so, and uh, I guess one, one final thing was the, uh, the schools because uh, the, the school E-rate, uh, it sounds to me like E-rate is up for renewal currently right now, and that they are uh, working on getting proposals for that as, as just a general consideration. And then one, one final thing, and I'll shut up, um, that the, uh, the RDOF funding auction is, uh, it closed in January, so there's a year still left before the new funding stimulus funding kind of comes out um but you know that's uh so i guess there's time to to get after it uh it's just the the opportunity labor may be too much great thank you for that good so i don't see any additional hands here but if there are please jump in um but if not, I mean, it's obvious here that there's a lot of people interested in this issue and a lot of people that could bring some expertise to this issue. So once again, I want to make a pitch for this uh, task force. Uh, there's, a, there's an application on the township website. If you're interested in sitting on that for a month or two months and helping us figure this out, uh, it'd be much appreciated. Nick, maybe you've got something here. I just wanted to, in closing here, thank Gary, Richard, and Bill for taking the time to join us. Um, you know, you certainly had no obligation to do that, but you brought some good insight and I hope that everyone else who attended this uh, got some good information and of course shared some, some good information as well. So uh, I know it sometimes it's tricky to do this in the middle of a work day. So we really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Right. And, it, and even if you're not on the task force, anybody who's attending, if you've got some information or things that you'd like to share with the planning commission, you know, please either contact myself or Nick and you know, eventually it'll get to us, but, but thank you all for coming. 
Um, so I guess uh, just formally we can adjourn uh, since we've got a vote still here with Ryan. Uh, so motion to adjourn Planning Commission. Is there a motion? So, so move. All right, we have support from Ryan. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay, and we're adjourned. Thanks everyone so much for, for coming today. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Have a good weekend. Uh, sorry, See planning ya. commissioners, could planning commissioners just stick on for a little bit? And maybe Karen too, if you want to, Taylor. So I wasn't sh sure if we, uh, we maybe needed to debrief a little bit or just uh, talk about at all um, where we're at and where we're, we're going. You know, I think, uh, Nick, how many applications do we have for the task?